In the never-ending Ford vs Chevy debate, it is Chevy that leads, and by a good margin. At least in NASCAR. So far, Chevrolet has garnered 851 wins in the vaunted series, while Ford has 728. After that, there are a lot of names that don't exist anymore, along with some that are still in business. Dodge is third with 217, followed by Plymouth, Toyota, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Mercury, Hudson, Buick, Chrysler, AMC, Lincoln, Studebaker, Nash and Jaguar. But those figures refer to overall wins by manufacturer and they are fairly easy to dig up. If you try and break it down further into which specific car model has the most wins, you really have to start digging. Some marks, Pontiac Oldsmobile, etc., are still gathered together as a whole, but there are a lot of single models here. So here are the most winning car models in NASCAR since Red Byron won the very first race in Ford Coupe on the sand at Daytona in 1948. Nash was one of the many smaller automakers that briefly competed in NASCAR. The lone triumph for the market came at the Charlotte Speedway. Curtis Turner won the race in a car owned and sponsored by Nash Motors Corporation. A total of 13 Jacks showed up when NASCAR held a road race at the airport in Linden, NJ, in 1954. The sport cars ran door to door with big stalkers. In a true rarity, the race was won by a foreign built car. Al Keller took the Czech red flag in Jaguar XK120. The Jack was one of the 21 foreign cars in the 43 car field as organizers tried to add an international flavor to a race called the International 100. Indiana based Studebaker won three Premier Series races all in 1951. Frank Mandy, gave Studebaker two of those three victories, the first coming at Columbia Speedway, a 0.500 mile dirt track in Casey, South Carolina. Studebaker never won again after 1951. The first NASCAR Strictly Stock Series race was won by Jim Roper, who drove his Lincoln from his home in Kansas to Charlotte. Lincoln, the luxury division of Ford Motor Corporation, would win only three more Premier Series races, all in 1949 and 50. Roger Penske entered NASCAR in 1972 with AMC Matador. Mark Donahue and Bobby Allison drove the cars to five wins in Cup between 1973 and 1975, two at Riverside, one in Ontario and two more at Darlington, the track too tough to tame. Lee Patty is shown here with his olds before the 1959 Daytona 500, but the mark saw its greatest number of victories in the 1951 season with Curtis Turner, Herb Thomas and all three of the Flock brothers driving. Kale Yabara and Richard Patty had some success with Oldsmobiles in the mid of 1970s too. The number one Pontiac driver was Rusty Wallace who tallied up 31 wins including a title in 1989. Both Richard Petty and Kyle Petty had wins in Pontiacs, as well as such other NASCAR notables as Fiebel Roberts and Cotton Owens, who each had seven, Junior Johnson with eight, Tony Stewart with 15, and Pontiac's last champion Bobby Laboni, who won the title in 2000 for Joe Gibbs Racing. The most outstanding of all the many Plymouth to have raced NASCAR tracks over the years has to be the Plymouth Superbird of the late 60s and early 70s. If we had to pick a favorite, it would be Richard Spetty 1970 Bird, the one so cool it was chosen to be a main character in the animated movie Cars. By my count, there were 14 different winning Mopar car models in NASCAR, from Lee Patty's tail finned 1950s Plymouth Savoy to Brad Keselowski Dodge Charger RT that he drove to the championship in 2012. In between were all kinds of Chryslers, Coronets, Plymouths, and even a DeSoto or two. But the Dodge name alone, Intrepid, Charger, Magnum, Avenger, accounted for 217 victories in a cup. The 1972-76 Montego had a naturally aerodynamic shape in the form of its sloping rear deck, but the front half of the car was also aerodynamically sound. It was even a little more wind slippery than its Ford counterpart. Among its track wins with Kale Yarbrough's victory in Daytona 500 in a Wood Brothers Cyclone in 1968, and another when David Pearson survived a bump and crash with Richard Petty to win in Daytona 500 in 1976. Between 1955 and 1957, Elmer Kott E.C. Kiefer ran a fleet of Chrysler 300Cs in NASCAR that consistently won races. 
Driver Tim Flock won 18 races in 1955 and took the championship. In 1956, Buck Baker was the main driver and won a second championship. Keith Kafer withdrew from NASCAR in 1957 after accusations that the team was cheating, even though NASCAR found no rules infractions of any of the cars. It was just fast, looked cool, and the competition hated it. The 300Cs was certainly one of the most elegant cars ever to turn a lap in NASCAR. Ford's response to the aerodynamic wars and NASCAR's super speedways in 1968 and 1971 was a pair of limited edition super sleek variants of its production cars that would keep Ford and Mercury an edge on the track, the Ford Torino Talladega and the Mercury Cyclone Spoiler 2. The Mercury won 8 Grand National races in 69 and 70s, same as the Plymouth Superbird, while the Ford Torino Talladega won 29 times. The best part is that both divisions had to offer homologation versions to the public. If you can find one of either model now, just buy it. Mario Andretti's Fairline won the Daytona 500 in 1967. Between 1956 and 1959, Ford uses Fairline to go against the mighty juggernaut of the seemingly unstoppable Kikafer Chrysler 300Cs. They had some wins with drivers like Fireball Roberts, Curtis Turner, Ralph Moody and Marvin Panch behind the wheels. This car had many wins, 61 as you see above, but it is most associated with Dale Earnhardt, who drove them to a good percentage of those 61 wins himself. He was driving a Lumina when he won his record-tying 7th championship at the Atlanta 500 in 1994. But there are many others that all done in black good French livery. Buick Regals were once the dominant cars in Winston Cup. Daryl Waltrip won the championship in 1981-82 and Bobby Allison won in 83 in Buick Regals. Richard Petty won the 1981 Daytona 500 in the Regal. Terry Laboni and Tim Richmond drove them and a couple of newcomers named Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace started out in Buicks. And when the great purge of GM divisions came 8 years ago, Buick survived. Now if they could just introduce NASCAR to China where Buicks are popular, we could really see if that win on Sunday, sell on Monday things works. Between 1952 and 1954, the Hornet won 66 races, a record that stood for years. With a relatively light weight and low center of gravity, the Hornet was ahead of its time. So was Hudson and its factory support for race teams. The result was a string of winning seasons that would be hard for any team to beat. When it came time to retire the popular and successful Thunderbird from cup competition, Ford didn't have another two-door coupe, so it got permission from NASCAR to run the four-door Taurus at first. The race car didn't have four doors, obviously, but it was the beginning of the end for race cars that bore any resemblance to what you could go into a dealership and buy on Monday after winning the day before. Taurus went on to win three cups titles and two Bush championships. So good on you, Taurus! The Ford Fusion stepped into a departing Taurus Wheels Wells in 2006 and was the Ford entry up all the way to 2018. In that time, it garnered 108 wins starting with Matt Kenson's victory at Audio Club Speedway in February of 2006. It was also the car that Kret Priffel drove to Ford 1000th win in NASCAR in 2013. This was as popular in showrooms as it was on the track, driven by the likes of Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson and both Dale Sr. and Jr. The Impala named traces its NASCAR roots back 60 years. For the 1963 model year, you could order the same setup they used in Cup as the Z11 package, with a 427 V8 and aluminium body parts. Most recently, it took to the track as Chevy's take on the car of tomorrow. After racing in the Craftsman track and Bush series, Toyota drove into Cup in a Camry in 2007. It was a bold move, the first foreign car maker to do so on a grand scale. After a shaky first year, the Camry started winning in 2008 and Toyota has since won three championships, including the most recent crown with Kyle Busch, driving his number 18 M&M Camry to victory for Joe Gibbs Racing. From 1978 to 1987, four Thunderbirds were a force to reckon with NASCAR. Aerodynamically efficient and still powerful, they were fast, stable on the high banks. Racing with Bill Elliott, aka Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, set the fastest qualifying lap in NASCAR history in one of these at Talladega, 
when he clocked at 212.809 miles per hour, a record that still stands. And it was one of the last race cars that actually looked like the thing you could go down to your Ford dealer and buy. Fred Lorenzen, Ned Jarrett and Dan Gurney all raced Galaxies to victory, with setups done by Holman and Moody, as well as by then car owned Junior Johnson. The Galaxies of this era, 1960-1968, had massive 427 cubic inch overhead cam BHs made to counter the hemispheric Chrysler nameplates that had been used at that time. They were controversial in their day and prized by collectors now, a great reason to get into car collecting. The Monte Carlo had almost twice as many wins as the second place car in Cup. If it was racing, it would have lapped the field twice. At least part of its success came from longevity. It was in Cup off and on from 1971 to 2007 and accounted for 27 of Chevy's 31 manufacturer championship and 16 of its 23 drivers titles. Named for a city with a racing history of its own, the Monte Carlo saw some of the greatest names in NASCAR history take the wheel, including Jeff Gordon, who won all four of his titles in it, and Dale Earnhardt Sr., who also had great successes. If you like our videos, don't forget to give thumbs up and write in the comments below what car do you want to know more about next time.